Hello, welcome back, and we are going to do the next uh, kind of uh, batch of proofs from this Fitch style proofs, natural deduction proof packet. Here we go, proof number 18. Um, this one has a name, uh, this, this argument, it's kind of famous. It says, if A, then B, uh, well, not B, therefore not A. And the idea is, okay, you know, if A, then B, but not B, so therefore not A, because, uh, you know, if A, well, then B <laughs> would be a contradiction. Uh, and, and that's kind of the whole, uh, the whole proof. This is called modus tollens, uh, and if you've taken another logic course, perhaps you're even told to, to kind of memorize uh, this, this Latin name. I think it's like modus tollendo tollens, which I... I, I um, I uh, can never remember uh, what that uh, Latin uh, means exactly. Anyway, uh, it's a famous valid argument, but you know, it's beneath us uh, now to, to kind of memorize these, these various uh, valid arguments. Uh, once again, you could verify via an exhaustive truth table uh, that this argument is valid, um, but uh, instead we're going to prove it um, <coughs> using the rules of our proof system. And here, okay, well, let's just begin and uh, I'll say what I need to say uh, when I need to say it. So here we go. We have two premises in this argument, uh, if A then B and not B. Okay, and um, uh, actually uh, uh, this proof is not really very exciting uh, because it's, it's just exactly what I said, right? If I want to show that uh, A uh, is impossible, or, you know, the negation of A, then there's really just one good way to prove a negation. It's to suppose A and try to get a contradiction. And, okay, I guess this contradiction comes more or less immediately. Because A, together with if A then B, uh, yields B. This rule is called arrow elimination, which is really just the name for modus ponens, which we do think of as kind of a basic rule. Uh, it's the basic rule governing uh, the, the conditional, okay, I talked about this before in the other video, so I won't, I won't repeat it. Uh, and this is just one, one, three. Uh, okay, good. Uh, but, alright, immediately we have a problem, because together with line two, this, this B just can't, this can't be. So we have B and not B, and intro for two. Um, that is a contradiction. Bottom intro five. Uh, and therefore... Um, this thing we assumed in line three is just not true. Uh, in fact, the negation is true. Uh, reason, uh, negation, intro, three through six. Okay, so this proof actually doesn't exhibit any uh, real uh, new, new features for us. Um, but, okay, uh, anyway, there it is. Uh, proof 19, though, I think is uh, something kind of new. Uh, what does this say? This also has a name, strengthening the antecedent. Uh, okay, so if I know uh, if B then C, I can conclude if that A and B uh, implies C. And of course this makes complete sense. Um, if B alone is enough to guarantee C, then having more information should also guarantee C. So this is quite reasonable, I'm already convinced. Um, but uh, how can we uh, prove this? Uh, how can we prove that this argument is valid? Well, let's go. Uh, there's one premise, uh, if B then C, and I need to prove this conditional. Okay, and so now, sort of for the first time, uh, we are faced with uh, this idea of how does one prove that a conditional holds? Well, all right, um, you, you sort of already kind of know the answer to this, I feel like, if you've done any uh, mathematics at all. Uh, well, what does it mean to say that this conditional holds? Well, when this is true, this is true. So I need to show that C somehow kind of follows from uh, A and B. Uh, in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to assume uh, A and B, and if from that assumption I can conclude C, well then what I've just done in this sum proof is to temporarily assume A and B, and uh, if from that assumption I can prove C, then I've shown that C is a kind of a result of uh, A and B, and therefore I'm entitled to conclude uh, A and B uh, implies C. Uh, and, uh, okay, it's pretty clear, I think, how, how to get here, um, because uh, if I have A and B, well, then I have B, 
uh, by and elim2, uh, and now uh, just right away I get line 4 and uh, from uh, 1 and 3, so that's arrow elim um, 1 and 3, but now look, I did it, right? I started with a and b, I derived c, and so now back in the main body of the proof on line 5, this is this entire proof is sort of over now, uh, I claim that I have, I have sort of shown this conditional. And so this is our first time in this video uh, seeing this. Um, this is called, this, this entire thing is called conditional proof. So conditional proof uh, is the sort of name for the way in which one proves a conditional. And one proves a conditional by, uh, by sort of showing um, that the antecedent leads to the consequent. And so in this subproof, I uh, supposed the antecedent uh, and did a little proof that the, that the consequence sort of follows from the antecedent, and hence uh, the conditional uh, must be true. Okay, uh, and uh, so, so this is the, um, uh, I mentioned, and now we have seen uh, that every two, uh, well, I'll just say, you cite the line numbers of verses two through four, okay, we can sort of, we could sort of uh, pause now and, 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 and basically remark that we've seen every, every rule now. Uh, there are a couple more coming, but, you know, this is basically pretty good. We've seen that for um, conjunction, there are two rules, an introduction rule and an elimination rule. For disjunction, uh, well, okay, I, I'll just say really quick, what, what, is, what is and intro? And intro says that you can assert uh, a conjunction when you know both of the conjuncts. And and elim says uh, when you have a conjunction, you can take from that uh, either of the conjuncts. Then you have or intro. This is the one where you uh, weaken your argument by, by sort of oring something on to something you already know. Uh, and you have or elimination, uh, which is proof by cases. Uh, then you have uh, negation uh, intro. Um, this is a proof by contradiction. Uh, proof by contradiction, uh, basically. Uh, and then you have negation elim, uh, or what you might call double uh, double negation elim. Uh, this just says that like not not p uh, from not not p uh, you can you can get p. Um, and now we've seen arrow elim, uh, which is just modus ponens, uh, and arrow intro, which is conditional proof. Okay, and so I, I sort of promised at the very beginning of this talk. Uh, of this talk, of this uh, sort of sequence of videos, uh, that there are sort of three uh, fundamentally uh, important uh, kinds of, uh, of proofs, kinds of subproofs, that is proof by cases, proof by contradiction, and uh, conditional proof. Uh, and um, uh, each of them uh, requires us to, to start a kind of a subproof and in the Fitch system that involves a kind of an indentation. And so we've now, uh, this, this is our first, this is the first appearance in this packet of, uh, of arrow intro, and we, we've sort of seen it all now, and in some ways we're kind of done. And so for every connective, this is a good time if you didn't already appreciate this, for each connective in your system, um, you have just two rules. Uh, one for how to introduce it, one for how to eliminate it, and so the system is kind of, it's kind of minimalist with respect to rules. Now, if you want your system to uh, handle other connectives, and we kind of do, we have a rule for biconditional, you might want to invent a rule for, for nor, or for, for exclusive or, or whatever other kinds of other connect binary connectives or, or whatever that you think are important, you can invent rules for them as well, but uh, already we've sort of, we've sort of uh, accomplished, I think, something uh, important. Okay, uh, I think I can just do, there's what, three more proofs, and they're all basically uh, very easy. So I think I'm just going to do them in about uh, five minutes, and then, then we'll be done with this video. So what is proof 20? It also has a kind of a cute name. Uh, so this was proof 19, this was proof 18. Uh, proof 20 uh, says, uh, if, when I, if I have uh, a, if A then B, I may conclude if A then B or C. Uh, this is called uh, weakening the consequent. Um, in other words, if, if A is enough to prove B, then A is enough to prove something even weaker than B. Okay? Uh, this seems like uh, it should be uh, valid. It totally is valid. Let's prove it using our rules. So we have one uh, premise, which is if A then B. Uh, and now I have one 
uh, thing to do, which is to, to prove this conditional. Well, there's just one good way to prove a conditional. It's very straightforward. You assume the antecedent, you derive the consequent. And so, okay, well, here I am. I've assumed A. Immediately, from 1 and 2, I get B. Uh, arrow, E, Lim, uh, 1, 2. And immediately from that, I get to B or C by or intro uh, 3. And so, I have now established uh, if A, then B or C. I assumed A, I derived B or C, I conclude if A, then B or C. Reason, our intro, uh, 2 through 4. Uh, okay, and, well, uh, these do get harder, but uh, these particular ones on this page are, are, are similarly sort of short, so I'll just do these last two, and then that will be it. Uh, so, what are uh, these last two? Proof 21. Uh, oh, there is no 21 for obscure reasons, so we'll just go right to 22. Oh, man, I hope my numbering is not all off. It's actually very possible that it is uh, all off, but because uh, I'm not going to remake the whole answer key for this. Um, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> Uh, according to this very old version of this packet, uh, this is this is the next proof, proof number 22. Uh, if A, then uh, B arrow A. Okay, well, uh, oh, from no premises. In other words, we're just really proving, it's not really an argument exactly, we're just proving that this is a tautology. Uh, okay, let's do it. Uh, so, I have an argument with no premises, and I have only one thing I need to do. Well, fortunately, uh, this this statement that I'm trying to prove is screaming at me, telling me what to do. Um, because it's a conditional, there's only one way to prove a conditional. You assume the antecedent, and you derive the consequent. Uh, what is the consequent in this case? It's uh, if B, then A. And so, working from the outside in, I see that uh, in order to, to execute this proof, there's just really exactly one thing to do. Uh, assume A, derive, uh, if B, then A. And then I can conclude this. Uh, well, how should I prove if B then A? Once again, the logical structure of the proposition that I'm trying to prove is telling me what I should do. And what I should do is, uh, to prove this conditional is, assume the antecedent derive the consequent. And so this proof, I mean, it just writes itself. Uh, I, need to, I need to assume B, and I need to uh, 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 derive A. And now you realize that uh, I just have A already right there. And so, in fact, I'm just done. Uh, because uh, line 3 holds by reiteration from line 1. Now, okay, this is maybe sort of strange. I didn't actually talk about, uh, I didn't actually talk out this proposition before starting. Um, it does seem strange to say, perhaps, that if A then, if B then A, seems kind of, kind of weird. Um, so, uh, well, Maybe I won't say anything. Uh, here it is. Uh, what is this? Our intro. Uh, two through three. And this, line five, is our intro. Uh, one to four. Okay, and uh, one proof left to go. Uh, proof 23. So, uh, we do it. Uh, what is it? Uh, it says from A or B implies C, uh, I should uh, conclude uh, if A, then C. Okay, this is nice because, okay, this, this goes in, in only one direction like this, but um, if this sort of weak information that A or B implies C, uh, then certainly uh, if I know A, I can guarantee C. And, all right, uh, we do it. Uh, here's the premise, uh, A or B implies C. I need to prove if A then C, okay, there's only one thing to do, uh, assume A and aim for C. Well, uh, from A, I can certainly OR on a B, so that's OR intro 2, but then uh, line 3 together with line 1 immediately gives me C, which is what I wanted. That's our elim uh, 1 and uh, 3. Okay, so what do I have? Uh, I set out uh, to prove if A then C, I assumed A, I derived C, I conclude if A then C. Reason, our intro, 
uh, two through four. All right, that is it. Uh, and uh, the only thing left to do is to introduce some little rules for the biconditional, although that's not really like a kind of a deep new thing, uh, to be honest. And uh, then we're, we're sort of done learning about our system. It's just a matter of practice and, and expertise. Okay, goodbye.